All right, we are going to be rotisserieing wings again. Uh, this time we're going to make them as crispy as possible. So these are gonna be extra crispy wings. Before I light my fire, there's a few things I wanna do here. One, I wanna get this basket lined up so it's perfectly in the middle. Because if I don't do that now, there's gonna be a hot fire and I'm gonna be messing with it and I'm gonna burn my hands. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure this little square here is lined up horizontal so it's nice and easy. Okay. And then the second thing we're gonna do is put this basket in, push the peg all the way in, and we'll get the basket, the basket itself, we'll get it centered, and then we'll tighten it. This screw is tricky because it's gonna hit, let me turn this on, it's probably gonna hit the sides, see? So I actually need to tighten it more or loosen it more. So I'm gonna loosen it, Let's turn it on, make sure this rotates and there's no issues because the last thing I wanna do is be messing with this when there's a hot lit fire. Okay, so this is, this is set up, it's working well. So now that I know I have my basket centered and it's gonna slide right on, let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll take it off, I'm gonna tighten this to make sure this doesn't go anywhere, okay? So now I can light my fire. One last thing before we go inside and actually get our chicken wings ready. A lot of people say when they close the lid, sometimes their Joe Tissery and the lid, there's a, there's a gap here. Well, the easiest way to fix that is this has some wiggle room. See, I can push this all the way back or all the way forward. Most of the time for your grill, you're gonna want it all the way forward. And I don't know if you can see with that angle, but it's perfectly aligned when I push mine all the way forward. So you do have wriggle room front and back. You have some, you know, you have the ability to turn it. So you can mess with it. There's about an inch give on, on all sides to make sure that this lid, you know, there's a nice seal and you're not just losing smoke and heat. So let's go inside. We'll get our wings ready. Again, we're gonna rotisserie some wings. We do 400 degrees for one hour. And then at the end, we like to open the lid so that it gets even, even hotter and makes that skin nice and crispy. But today we're gonna do a little different. It is still gonna be 400 for one hour, but we're actually gonna mix cornstarch in with our seasoning. And then that cornstarch is gonna give it a lot of extra crunch and snap. And these are gonna be really crunchy wings, almost like they're fried, but obviously they're not. So let's go inside, let's get everything mixed. We'll get our chicken open and then we'll come back out here. We've got our fire going. And now it is time to season up these wings. So again, we are doing rotisserie wings. We will be doing them on the jotisserie in this Napoleon basket. Uh, we just calibrated the basket, if you will, right? We just made sure that it's gonna fit right in the middle. Um, these screws aren't gonna hit anything and we're good to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna season these wings. And you see I have some cornstarch here. This is gonna be for some crunch. Right, so this is gonna give us that fried wing texture, but none of the grease, none of the hassle um, of frying wings. We are going to take this cornstarch, we're gonna season it with seasonings of choice, right? Mine is going to be um, Meat Church, uh, their all-purpose seasoning, which is the gospel, and then also just a touch of holy voodoo. This is spicy, it's delicious, but it's spicy. So I'm gonna um, not use as much of this as this. It's all personal preference. Uh, it's not just me eating these wings, so I have to account for everybody. What we're gonna do is the cornstarch and the seasonings are going in this big mixing bowl. We'll get it all in there, and then we're just gonna dump our wings in and just mix them up and make sure everything's coated. If you remember from the last time we did wings, as that rotisserie's moving, a lot of stuff is falling off. So we don't need to, it is not an exact science to get this completely coated, because once we're done cooking, we're gonna dust them again with some, uh, with some seasoning when they come off. If you're not making a lot, so I'm doing three pounds. These are Costco party wings. These are the best deal on chicken wings you could possibly get. Super cheap, they come in a package of six. Um, I forget the exact price point, but a package of six, which is six pounds, is not a lot of money at all. If you're just doing a couple or a pound, you can do it in a Ziploc bag. You don't need a giant mixing bowl, right? Get your cornstarch, your seasonings in the bag, drop your chicken in, mix it all up, take it out. We're doing a lot, so I'm doing it in this bowl. So again, what we're gonna do now is 
We're gonna get our cornstarch and our seasoning in the bowl. We'll mix it up. Then I'm gonna open these chicken. I'm not gonna rinse them. We're gonna open the chicken, throw it all in here, mix it all up, make sure everything's coated. Right from there, we're gonna load it into the basket and then we'll put the basket on, right? So the other thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna spray this basket with cooking spray before we put this stuff in because I'm trying to make cleanup as easy as possible. Cleaning this basket is kind of a pain. It just is. There's a ton of little grooves and you know stuff gets in there and it cooks and it's fine. Usually I fill up the sink with hot water and soap and just let it soak. I'm gonna use Pam today to try to get stuff to not stick to begin with. So let's go ahead and get started with our seasonings, put it in the bowl, and then we'll mix our chicken. I don't have exact measurements, by the way. I'm just doing this for feel and touch and taste. So, uh, you know, it's not like, oh, two cups this, two tablespoons this. We're just throwing it in here. And uh, if we need to add more of one thing or another, then that's what we'll do. All right, it all went in. And like I said, not as much of this. Okay, that was probably too much. So we have all of our, our seasoning and cornstarch in there. Let's mix it up. So you see we went from a, uh, a white to a pink. And you can smell the seasoning in there, so that's how we know we have enough. It, you, you do have to be pretty liberal with your seasoning, otherwise it's just gonna taste breaded. Obviously we're gonna season them again after to account for everything, but you know I like to put a nice healthy amount of seasoning in there. So this is good to go. Let's open our chicken, get it in there and get it all mixed up. These are coated really well. You can see how well they're coated. Uh, I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute. We'll go check on the fire. After I check on the fire, we're gonna spray down the basket, put these in the basket, and then as soon as that fire's ready, the basket's going up. So we are perfect. We're right, uh, we're right at the 400 mark. If you remember, this is an aftermarket um, thermostat or, or a temperature probe, temperature gauge, because the other one broke. But uh, let's look inside. I put a couple chunks of apple in there and this is burning really well. I did not bank my charcoals. This is just a one hour cook. There's really no reason to be banking the charcoals. That's for longer, you know, rotisserie, you know, loins and, and uh, prime rib type cooks. So let's close this lid. We'll go inside, fill up our basket and then uh, go ahead and put it on. All right. We have, uh, we sprayed this with Pam. You can still see some of the residue. Again, that's just to help with cleanup because this is a real pain to clean up. So let's get our chicken in the basket. I'm gonna do it somewhat gentle. I'm not just gonna dump it in here because I wanna preserve some of the seasoning. Obviously, as it's rolling and tumbling and banging into each other, a lot of it's gonna come off, but you know, we'll try to keep on what we can keep on. Get this loaded. Once this is loaded, we'll go ahead and put it right on that jotisserie. All right, we're all loaded. I put it on one side because it's easier to close the basket. I don't want to make a giant mess closing it. Uh, this is three pounds. And you see there's plenty of room. We've literally only filled half. So, well, maybe a little more than half because of these flappers here. But um, some people get up to five pounds in here. I'm doing three just because that's all I need to cook. But um, this basket, uh, I keep complaining about how to clean it, but it is a very helpful, very versatile, very useful. Uh, it's like $90, $80, something like that. I will have a link uh, in the description of this video to this basket and a few others that are a little more affordable. Um, they all work really well. This one I, I particularly love because it's round. There's some square ones. This is round and the flappers are helpful. So let's get this closed up. We'll get it on the fire and then we're just gonna, we're gonna wait and monitor. Let's get the basket on. And this is exactly why we lined it up ahead of time because this is hot and I'm not trying to burn myself. And if I was spending five minutes fidgeting with this, that could be a problem. So we should be good. Let's do a, a dry run here to make sure. 
and you see that seasoning comes off as it tumbles, which is why you know we want to coat it evenly, but we don't need to obsess over it. All right, we're good. We did a full rotation. Let's close this because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So let's go ahead and close this. We'll come back in an hour. I'll probably check on it in a half an hour to make sure. But uh, this is an easy, straightforward cook. These are going to come out amazing. So uh, let's just relax and check back in a bit. We're about 45 minutes or so, 30 something minutes in. I have a timer set, but um, let's take a look. Temp's holding strong at 400. And these are looking really good. Yeah, this is looking really good. I can already tell these are going to be crispier than uh, the no cornstarch. So these look great. I'm going to close the lid. I don't want that fire to get too big and burn them up. But uh, we'll come back at the hour mark and take a look. All right, we are at the hour mark, essentially. I think we've got another five or six minutes to go. I've opened the lid. What that's going to do is make these flames uh, really come up and, and jump up and uh, hit these wings and, and really crisp up nice. So I'm going to let it roll like this. Uh, wide open, lid open for, I don't know, five, ten minutes to give it uh, even more crunch. Okay, these are done. So I'm going to take these off. I'll move the camera. I have some hot gloves. Uh, we'll take these off. I'm going to throw them in a mixing bowl. And a couple of these I'm going to sauce, and the others we'll just throw a little more seasoning on. Okay. These are done. They're very hot. Get this opened. Okay, so these came out really nice. So they're very hot, but these came out great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move some to a different mixing bowl. Hot, 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 hot. I'll just throw a few in here. Just a little bit of Frank's Red Hot, and we will just toss them up. Great. These came out awesome. We're going to hit them again with some seasoning. So we did some spicy before. We did some all-purpose, some spicy, and now we're going to hit it with a little bit of sweet. Just a little bit. That was more than a little. Just a little bit. We will mix it up. And we're done. So these definitely came out fantastic. I can, I don't even know if you can hear that, but these are crispy. You can hear my fingers scrape across them. So these came out well. Honestly, wings on the Joe Tissery are the best wings you'll ever have in your life, period, end of story however you want to season them that that's up to you but just the process of the rotisserie the extra flavor that charcoal adds it, it really they come out amazing um i'm gonna let these cool off and then we're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna dive in big time but uh, if you have any questions let me know uh you know feel free to to comment like subscribe i have links in the description to the products that we've used today but also i have an amazon store for everything I use, not just for this cook, for other cooks, for my nerd projects around the house. So if you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to reach out. I'm uh, always happy to talk back and forth.